up the street, we were just talking to her. Is this your daughter? Yeah. And we were talking about the Lord. Um, we gave her an invitation right there at her church. We were talking about Jesus, our Savior, and so forth, and how she can be saved and have everlasting life. Uh -huh. um, and uh, but my, that's brother Austin right there. We're just right around the corner. You know, I think it's 75th, right? Yeah. Right on 75th. You know where the Deaf Baptist Church is? Um, right there when you're going not, I, I kind of away from the city on 75th. Law school. Yeah, it should be right, right by the school, right there. Uh, but anyway, Deaf Baptist Church, we're renting out a, a building in there. It's Isle of Baptist Temple, mm -hmm. Kansas City. But um, yeah, I was just, I, I, we were just, we asked her this as well. Like, say if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you go to heaven? I don't know. Yeah, would you like to know and, and be sure you, you have an everlasting life? You know, and mm -hmm. okay, sure, I can share it with you from the Bible. I shared it with her, but I'll go with you because I mean, you're here now, so mm -hmm. that's nice. Um, see, um, the Bible teaches in Romans chapter uh, 3, it talks about our sin and so forth, mm -hmm. the bad news. Mm -hmm. And so then it says here, um, let's see, in verse number. Uh, 10 it says as it is written there is none righteous no not one so the Bible teaches that word there's none righteous that's including me you know I'm a sinner I've broken God's law you know you as well you, you know we're all sinners right we, we've committed uh, we've broken the, the law of God so then it says here um, uh, let's see verse number, verse number 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God you know we've all sinned haven't we right you agree that you've sinned as well so then it tells us that the penalty of sin, this is bad news, but we'll get to the good news, of course. But the penalty for sin, what happens to sinners uh, excuse me, that don't come to Christ? It says, for the wages of sin is death. There's that payment. The payment of sin is death. So, you know, we all die, right? I mean, that's just going to happen. But the Bible talks about not just a physical death, but a death that's talking about hell. Because it says, for the wages uh, of sin is death. And then uh, we see in chapter 5, in verse 12, um, and it talks about where sin came from and mm -hmm. how that happened. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for the all of sin. So you see there's that death there, you know, as judgment from God or whatever that God has put upon us because we've sinned, but that came from Adam, right? That, he sinned and so forth, and then we all became sinners because of him. So then it tells us in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, 15, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So that's just talking about the hell, right? So mm -hmm. sin, place of fire, and so forth, the Bible teaches. So the way that you can't go there and you, you have the everlasting life is this right here. Because we saw earlier that the payment of sin is death. It's talking about hell, right? Mm -hmm. Judgment from God. Then it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So God gives us a gift, right? And that's something that's everlasting. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. So now say if I was to give you this Bible, I said, here you go. You can take it. Now say if you mm -hmm. took it, right? Now then I was like, wait a minute. Let me come back tomorrow and, I'm, I'll, and I take it from you, right? Mm -hmm. Now for one, I'd be a liar because I said that's a gift for you. Right. And you can have it, right? <laughs> Right. Now, another, uh, it wouldn't be a, no longer your gift anymore. Right. You wouldn't have it. It wouldn't be in your possession. Right. So if God was to give you everlasting life, do you believe you'd ever take that away from you? Uh, no. He wouldn't, right? Because mm -hmm. remember the first, most famous verse in the Bible, right? For God so loved the world that he mm -hmm. gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, there's that perishing because of the damnation without mm -hmm. Christ. But those who just trust in Jesus and believe on Him is everlasting life, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if, if He took everlasting life away, it would never have been everlasting, right? right. So something that you get from God is an everlasting gift, everlasting, eternal life. So so then it says here, um, back in Romans, um, so that's the good news. You can have that everlasting mm -hmm. life through our Savior Jesus. He's the Savior of the world, right? So the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, like the Christmas story, born of a virgin, things like that, and lived a sinless life, something that we couldn't do, of course, because we're sinners, died in our place and rose again. But uh, then it tells us in Romans chapter 5, kind of more, uh, verse number, let's see, verse 6, it says, For when we, uh, we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's good news for us, for ungodly, we're sinners, you know. 
but that this is and, and uh, when we were yet without strength you know naturally we want to go to god on our own terms god i did this i was good to my family you know i brought my children up or whatever it might be i was good to my parents i did this and that we want to say something that we have done we're going to god on our own strength but god says it says that we are without strength we can't get to God by good works. It says there's none good, there's none righteous, there's none holy. We're all sinners. There's only one good, that's God. And Jesus is the good shepherd, meaning he's God. You know. So the Bible teaches there that, you know, uh, for by grace are ye saved. You're saved by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not be a it is the gift of God. None of works that's anything we should boast. Does that make sense? I mean, we couldn't be good enough to get to heaven. I mean, that's why God sent His Son, so we could go with Him, right? Right. right so, and then the last couple of verses here, it says, But God commendeth or proveth His love toward us, mm-hmm. and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Good news again, you know, we died for our sins, you know, we're sinners. And He took our place and was crucified for us and shed His blood and things like that. Because the next verse says, um, uh, let's see, much more than being now justified by his blood, that's Christ's blood, Christ's blood, we shall be saved from wrath of him. So we saw earlier the wrath of God would be going to hell, right? Right. So obviously that's not good. But God says you can. You don't have to have that wrath. You can come through uh, my son Jesus Christ and be justified through his blood. So justify is a big word. But just mm-hmm. if you break the word down, kind of see the word here. It says just if i uh, never sinned. I'm not sure if you've heard that in church at all growing up or whatever, but it just means just if he never sinned, like, you know, through the blood of Christ and his goodness and his righteousness, right, and his holiness. So it's his, his precious blood that we, you know, and he satisfies his God dying in our place, right? So then the last couple verses we'll go to, um, you know, in Romans chapter 10, verse number 9 and 10, talks about what exactly you got to do to be saved. Uh, says that uh, for with that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart. Uh, I'm talking about inner being. You know, you have a spirit, soul, right mind, things like that. So believe in thine heart that God of the raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So if you believe in Jesus, you're trusting in Him. That word believing is trusting, relying, and depending on Christ. So only what Christ has done is is it. You know, nothing that we can do. You know, it's going to be through believing and trusting in what He's done. So this says if you believe that, you're going to confess it with your mouth because of what you believe. Because it says in the next verse, For with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So because of what you believe in here, your heart, your inner being, you're going to confess that with your mouth, right? Because if you, if you believe something really in here, it's going to come out. <clears throat> so then the last verse tells us, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? shall be saved, right? So if you trust in Jesus, you'll be saved. Won't you be a corner Bible? Now, do we'll go through a really quick um, questions review. Now, do you accept this, that Christ came for you, for us, you know, we can die for all of our sins and, and we'll bear and rose again according to the Bible? Yes. You believe that, right? You trust yes. that? Now, um, say if you were to ask the Lord Jesus to save you right now, do you believe he would save you? Yes. He would. According to the Bible, right? Who shall yes. call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So since you know that he would save you and you and you believe in it and you're trusting in him, mm-hmm. let's take it one step further and ask the Lord to save you right now, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, you just put your hand on the um, word of God. I'll, I'll help you with prayer, okay? okay. Say, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I believe you died for my sins, was buried and rose again. Save me from hell, which I deserve, and give me eternal life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, great, awesome. So I said, I'm glad you made that decision. Um, and we we got that. We'll give you another one. We give one to your daughter, okay. but uh, we'll give this to you. Um, this is where we're at. We're right around the corner. We have services on Thursday nights, mm-hmm. you know, um, and then also Sunday afternoons because the pastor travels from Kansas to get to get here in the afternoon on Sundays. Okay. So we're having two services right now in the right of the week. And um, the, there's a website there, but we're just literally a couple minutes down the road from driving distance. And if you want to get some exercise, you can even walk there on a Sunday afternoon, you know, come to church. I don't know, but we'd love to have you come to church. You know, what I'm trying to stress, uh, you know, church is very, very important. I'm not sure if you uh, grew up much in church at all or yes, you did, right? So you understand that church is important. The people there are important, the encouragement. 
you know, if I didn't have church, I really, you know, I really wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't be alive. Uh, church is what it helped me out so much in my Christian walk. Be able to challenge me, you know, to be better and this and that. Um, so, you know, church, uh, so you understand that the importance of church. And we would love to have you and your family come. And, and uh, you know, uh, also after salvation, there's a verse the Bible tells us that they believed in Jesus Christ. They believed on him, the mm-hmm. preaching of the kingdom, Jesus the Lord, and the gospel. And then they were baptized, both men and women. So after salvation comes baptism. And there's a lot of people that get that mixed up. You have to be baptized for salvation. Mm-hmm. In the Bible, the Bible just simply says you got to believe on Christ. And what baptism is, is, is basically it's like um, a picture when you're standing in the water. Mm-hmm. Kind of like you're, you, you, you're, died, you're on the cross, like you died with Christ. And then you're buried with him. And then you're, right, you're raised up uh, a new life. And that's what is a picture of him, you know, his taking away your sins. Of course, it doesn't do that. It just shows that. Uh, and also, you're making a public identifying with Christ and saying, I believe on Christ, you know, as your Savior. You're identifying yourself with Christ. So that's important, too. Um, the pastor, Pastor, Rock, pastor Rocky Randall, his information's on there. Uh,